I was in America not too long ago and I stopped by two Bricks and Minifigures stores. The selection of sets here was pretty awesome. Yeah, Bricks and Minifigures is an independent store that buys and sells old and new Lego sets. There's so many awesome ancient treasures that you can find at places like this. So come with me and we'll take a look at the stores that I visited. We'll see what goodies they had for sale and we'll see if the prices were fair or if they were a little bit too expensive. And then we'll finish the video by taking a look at the sweet, sweet haul that I managed to buy. You can see what I ended up picking up and how I plan on using these items in future LEGO creations. Let's get going. We'll kick things off at the first Bricks and Minifigures store in Anaheim. It's a smaller store, but it checks out. I came in here hungry to see Bionicle sets, and I found them right away. Look at these classic Nui Rama. They appear to be in pretty good condition, especially since these sets are fairly old. Remember, they came out in 2001. That was ages ago. Now, they wanted $75 for these. You can get these on Bricklink for like $15 to $25 less than that in used condition. But, you know, I guess you also have to factor in things like shipping cost online, which you wouldn't have to pay here. So that kind of bumps the price up a little bit. I don't know, this is an okay price. Next door, they had this Tarakava set. Well, half of it. The original set, of course, comes with two Tarakava. $60 for this one. You know, it appears to be missing a few pieces, which is a shame because I actually don't own this set. I would have loved to have bought this, but if I was going to buy it, I want it 100% complete with both of them. So it was a shame to pass it up, but I'll find a better one in time. So look, not the best prices for Bionicle sets, but it's still amazing to see really old Bionicle sets from the very first wave for sale in 2024. That in itself is pretty crazy. Now, nearby there was a lovely selection of classic minifigures from non-licensed IPs. I mean, look at this old minty green color on this Life on Mars alien. And then a translucent helmet just next door, so pretty. Nearby, I spotted this Doctor Doom minifigure, and you know, after the somewhat recent casting announcement for Doctor Doom in the MCU, you can see that the value of this figure is already going up, and it was already expensive to begin with. Although the price of Lego goats is going down a little bit. You know, these used to be like $100 or $150 each. But now that we have goats appearing in the collectible minifigure series, we had them earlier this year, the old goat with the printing on the side of the torso is a little bit cheaper than it used to be. You know, $80 is still wild, but this is one of the most expensive LEGO animals given how rare it is. A lot of people want this, man. All right, let's head back to these shelves and see what other kind of nice used or sealed sets were inside. What goodies have we got? Well, we have the classic Captain Rex speeder bike set, which comes with the first ever Phase 2 Rex. $220 for this set. Most of the value, of course, is lying in that Rex figure himself. That figure goes for crazy money. Even though if you want an updated version of this minifigure, one came out this year in a set that you can buy for like 20 bucks. Or you can buy the old Rex for like 200. Same figure, wildly different prices. And for the exact same price, you can get this amazing sealed Exoforce set. Aero Booster, oh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, this is like the closest we ever got to Lego Gundam. Yeah, that second wave of Exo Force sets really had some Gunpla vibes going on. I loved it. Nearby, there was this real gem. It is the Red Baron set, an old and a rare one. But that's why it's $650 in box. Speaking of old and rare sets, we have the very first modular building, as well as the Green Grocer, a fan favorite modular building. The prices for these, a little crazy. But still, that's modular buildings for you. The old retired ones, they go for crazy prices. Now, if that's too much to stomach, you can buy that cafe corner for 800 out of box. Man, $2,000 sealed, $800 opened. It's insane how much a set costs when you have it sealed in box. Plenty of old UCS sets here as well. Some built and some not. It's always a pleasure seeing these sets. They are true works of art. All of the Ultimate Collector series of sets, they're incredible. If you want the best of the best LEGO sets, you pick these ones up, yeah? So look, I enjoyed seeing all of these awesome products here for sale. I just like looking at old LEGO. It's fun time for me. But yeah, this place was a tad too expensive for me. Plus, you know, I also have to convert these back into Australian dollars since that is what I'm paying with. That's what my money is. And that actually makes these cost even more for me. 
But hey, the next Bricks and Minifigures store, they had much better prices and a bigger selection. So let's see what they had, and more importantly, if they had cool Bionicle sets for sale. This here is Bricks and Minifigs Whittier. And right off the bat, I loved this design on the door, making it look like a classic Lego Pirates set. Heck yeah! Now, this store was actually pretty massive, and it did have a good selection of Bionicle. Before that, though, I got a bit distracted by some of these great Star Wars minifigures, and they were well-priced as well. But while there's some well-priced ones, there are some higher-end figures. Like the most expensive Lord of the Rings minifigure that there is, Blue Coat Bilbo. $225 for this one. Now, this is unique because it only came in this Target-exclusive Hobbit DVD. Weird way to get a minifigure, but, you know, that's what makes him so valuable. Got a few other pricey castle figures, though they do look awesome. Oh, and then a whole army for the evil Lord Vladek to command. It's so impressive seeing a massive army of castle minifigures. Oh, and check that out. This goat is $100. The last store had it for $80. Interesting. Two more incredible LEGO castle sets here. I didn't have space for these in my suitcase. Otherwise, I totally would have picked these up and brought them back to Australia. I've wanted these two sets since I was a kid. They're so cool. Oh, and just next door, check out this crazy castle battle pack. $150 for this one. What? On Bricklink, this actually sells for like 100 to 150 USD sealed. So, look, they're asking for the higher end price, but that is its value. Now, out of curiosity, I looked up the price of each of the individual figures. Here's all of their prices in US dollars as well as in Australian dollars. All of these figures cost roughly $52 on average if you buy them all together. So really, you're paying a hundred extra dollars just so that it's sealed in box. Man, actually opening that up, ripping that tape off, it's gonna cost you a hundred bucks to do so. That's crazy, isn't it? All right, let's take a look at some of those Bionicles now. There was a pretty decent selection. We had more 2001 sets. This is the Muaka and Kanura, the bull and the tiger inspired creatures. Here's the original box for this set. This way you can get a better look at how they originally appeared. It was a little hard to photograph them in this case. But yeah, the ones that were for sale in this store, out of box, it was $200 for the two of them. Now look, they seem in good condition and it looks like they're 100% complete, so maybe not too bad. Just above that we had Splitter Beast and Stormer XL. Splitter Beast was 40 bucks, 100% complete and all there. And Stormer XL was 35 bucks. Now, spoilers, I didn't pick up Stormer XL, but I should have. That price was pretty decent. I, I don't know what I was thinking when I didn't buy this. I, I should've. There's also the Sendox V1 for 70 bucks and G2 Onowa for 50. You know, I think the prices for these built, they seem pretty fair. Then we move down to some boxed sets. These were not sealed, just in box. Or in their canisters, I suppose. Now, this is where it gets a little wild. $150 for Antros, and it's actually missing the red kind of webbing thing that comes around the canister. So it's not even complete and they want 150 bucks. I don't know, that's a little too much for me. Then $100 for Pahatu and $120 for Kopaka behind them. Again, they're also missing that webbing on the box. Yeah, too much for me. And then here are the prices for the Paraka with their canisters. Not sure why AVAC is a little bit more than the others, but okay. It is nice to see that all of these canisters have the masks still attached on the top. You could actually remove these and use them in mocks if you wanted to. That was a, a nice addition to the set. You got the rubber one and this one too. Two masks in the one set? Heck yeah. Then we had a bunch of Varky. They were all $50 each. And then just next door to these sets, there was a really nice find. Some of these old classic dinosaur sets. These were really strange, but I remember picking up a few of them as a kid and loving them. $75 for this in the box. Then they had the Toa Mata for $125 each. Yeah, I see these canisters complete with the set inside of it for sale for like 30 bucks at toy fairs here in Perth. Oh, you know, at least you get a silver mask that's attached on top of the canister. That was not featured in the original set, so they're giving you a nice freebie. But I don't think that freebie is worth that much money. So look, there's no use beating around the bush. These prices are wild and a little bit too much. But some were also pretty fair, so yeah, it was a bit of a mix. Still, hey, either way, it's just nice to see Bionicle sets for sale. It brings me joy. Oh, and off in the corner there was another CCBS set, it's Chewbacca for 40 bucks. Not too bad. This shelf had a few construction and other CCBS Bionicle adjacent sets. Let's check those ones out. 
We got the original Darth Vader for 40 bucks in the box. I suppose this Vikings Fenris Wolf set does count as construction. There are some Bionicle adjacent pieces in there that you could use on a Bionicle mock. This was $80 in the box though. Ooh. And then we had a very rare employee exclusive Christmas gift. This is actually like an advent calendar. It was a fun concept, but yeah, if you wanted this, you have to work for LEGO in some regard and they would send it to you around Christmas. $350 if you want to pick this up, but hey, it's not easy to come by this set. And it's lovely to see some Lord of the Rings sets for sale. The old Orc Forge, $250 for that one in the box. Man, look at those figures and look at the great selection of parts that you get in this. LEGO cooked when they made Lord of the Rings sets. Battle at the Black Gate for $400. Now this does of course come with the set exclusive Aragorn figure, which is beautiful. That figure alone is $90. And a few other nice oddities and Lord of the Rings sets as well. They had a good selection. But with all of that, I do think the best place to go in any Bricks and Minifigures store are these big old tables that are just filled with parts. Yeah, this is always gonna be pretty good value for money. If you fill up a cup, you fill up a bag, you can often find some hidden gems and get your money's worth. I did exactly that and I found all kinds of good things, including some Bionicle. So with that, let's see what I ended up picking up at these stores. I picked up this Green Lantern Ultra Build set. This one actually freshly came into the store after I'd recorded all my videos and I ended up buying it for 10 bucks. I mean, look at all of these awesome bright green armor pieces. You combine these with some of the pieces you get on G2 Liwa and you've got an awesome supply of bright green. What a good parts pack. I also picked up that Sendox Speeder. I came to the US looking for this specific set. I've been hunting it down for ages and haven't been able to find one until now. Any Bionicle vehicle is a good set. And then I did grab Splitter Beast for 40 bucks because oh, it's such a good set and I thought it was a decent enough deal. Now, if you wanna hear my thoughts on this awesome set, I did a review for this on my channel not too long ago. I'll have a link to that one below if you wanna check it out. Now, here are some bags of random pieces that I bought at these two stores. I'll highlight some of them briefly. Well, I got some nice Technic panel pieces in white and red. I love these parts. I wanna use them in a similar way to how Muffin Toa has done on this mock. Using them for armor on the chest, I think that's a great idea. Old Technic pieces, man, they're the best. I also grabbed any CCBS armor shell that I could or just any other vaguely Bionicle related pieces. You know, I had to dig a little bit to find them, but what I got, I think it was worth it. Oh yeah, and then I got these Ketorange CCBS shells. Now, these are some interesting ones. These actually don't appear in any Hero Factory or Bionicle set. No, instead they come in a Chima set. And not a Chima Ultra Build set, no, a system Chima set. They only appear in this color in this set. You know, it's awesome to be able to find four of these. I even managed to find Coulter's Mask hidden away in these bins of pieces. Dude, how good is that skull design on this mask? One of the highlights of G2, that's for sure. And then I grabbed a lot of handfuls of random system pieces. My aim is to use these on various system dioramas, like this one that I built here. A lot of the earth tones like dark brown, dark green, dark tan, or even dark bluish gray. I use them a lot when I'm building landscapes like this. So stocking up a little bit more on that is always helpful. Then I found a few other odd parts like some Snap pieces. I love Snap. It's one of the weirdest Lego themes that doesn't even look like Lego, but it is. You'll notice I got this wing piece too. I only got one, but you know, that's all they had. I bought this because I was inspired by some of Jafer's recent work. He uses heaps of these feather elements to create some beautiful designs. Now sure, I'm gonna need a lot more to recreate something like this, but I'm going for the slow burn. I buy them every time I see them for cheap prices and eventually I'll have as many as Jafer has and I'll be able to build something cool. Now we've been talking about weird parts. Here's a few more that I found. I found a Mindstorms piece and a few other minifigure accessories as well. So many hidden treasures, it's the best. But my personal favorite were all of these macaroni pieces. You got the curved ones and the straight ones as well. There's so much you can do with parts like this. For example, I could do what Joxon did on this mock right here. The funky looking texture that these parts create on the lower waist and the top of the torso. It's extraordinary. Now I can do something similar in a variety of colors with the pieces that I got. The possibilities are endless. There you go, gang. That's my haul from these two stores. Hopefully you enjoyed watching and hopefully seeing some of those mocks gave you a few ideas for your next Lego creation. I'll have links to all the mocks that I showcased below. Go and check out some of their other work. But that's all for today, guys. Thank you and good night.